Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are going to be taking a look at the age-old saying, the age-old basil, if you will, of built versus bought. Now, this being Forza, there is a little caveat to this. We aren't going to be racing completely stock cars up against modified vehicles. Uh, certainly with the way Forza works and so on, well, the stock cars are going to get thrashed. Uh, however, what we are going to do and what this challenge here is all about is taking a vehicle that starts off very high in a class. So, let's say you're working with an A-class vehicle, you take a car that starts off very close to the top of A-class. Now, the actual base vehicle is going to be very quick, but you don't have very many room for upgrades. The That will be the bought car, if you will. You get a little bit of upgrades on it, but you won't get very much. Now, the built car is going to start from any much lower class than A-class in this instance, and will be modified up to the top of A-class. Now, that could be cars like this Volkswagen Golf, for an example, uh, that will get a lot of upgrades. You can do a lot of different things from engine swaps, driveline swaps, tyres, and all of that kind of thing. Build a car how you want it, and then we're going to race them together. Theoretically, according to Forza's rating system, the cars should be equal, but what is going to happen? Is the better base car uh, the thing to have, or is having a lot more freedom for upgrades the way to go? Now, for this first round, I am driving one of the built cars. So, we started off I think it's maybe C class, high D class, with a Bentley, four and a half litre, although it is now not that anymore. Uh, <laughs> it is all wheel drive, rally tyres, has the 3.2 straight six from a BMW put in it. There's not very much Bentley left in it, but it is a very good B class car. That's the theory, at least. Um, we're up against all sorts. There's an Insignia, there's an Evo 6 for the bought category, there's a Vandura for good luck. Vandura's surprisingly quick. Surprisingly quick are the uh, are the Vanduras. As a Civic uh, front wheel drive, of course, always going to struggle off the line a little bit. Some cars here are converted to all wheel drive. Some are still rear wheel drive. I think there's a Shelby. Is that a Shelby? I think there's a Cobra up ahead. The Regalia is a brave choice. Uh, that is for sure. It is big and it is heavy. Uh, it can be quite quick though. Uh, weirdly, I know, I know this, this Bentley has been tested a few times. Is generally uh, regarded as a very very quick uh, B class car. I don't think the Shelby gets very much in the way of PI whatsoever. Uh, to play with. I think that's even the very top of B-Class, to be honest with you. Uh, but we will see how the race uh, how the race pans out. Uh, we've got a Vandura all over the back of us. We have managed to duck underneath that Shelby. It looks like we're going to have a go on alongside the Evo 6. Not quite. It was worth a crack, but that's always an area that you're just going to struggle with an overtake. So far, we have got two built, two bought, and then me with the built. Going to have a look up the inside, maybe into turn one. Uh, see, the problem with the Bentley is as good as it is, it's all acceleration. Top end is terrible. It has the aerodynamic properties of a small building. Actually, no, quite a large building, I take it back. Uh, it doesn't have very good aerodynamic properties. We're three wide, and I'm not going to find any speed. Well, I'm going to find speed out there, but I'm not going to find any way past. Although, speaking of a small building, a Vandura's turned up. So an actual small building, and a Civic's also had a go. Uh, Christ, I don't know what to be in all of this. It is troublesome, and of course, I'm the one that gets screwed by street furniture and nobody else. God damn it. God damn it. I haven't got anywhere to put the big old Bentley. Uh, <laughs> come on. Come on, Bentley. We can do this. We can find a way. Okay, we're going back past the Vandura. I think it's 2002 Turbo that is leading the way. Indeed, it is. Volkswagen Notchback is in third, about to come under threat from vehicles around. Uh, can I have a look for a way past the Civic? Not quite in all of this. I mean, in general speaking terms, the built cars are doing better. Uh, the Civic is C something or other uh, to start with. So not quite as low PI as some of the vehicles, but uh, considerably lower than the likes of the Evo 6 and the Regalia. Uh, can I find a way? The problem is, though, Bentley's very quick. I'm just struggling to find a way to overtake. The one best overtaking spot around this circuit I found myself boxed out at for lap after lap. I mean, the Civic's going to have a go. The Civic might actually open the door for me a little bit here. If I can be sneaky, if anything, the Civic might have left itself exposed. Uh, oh! <laughs> the Civic's not going to want to be in the middle of that. That's the squeeze for the poor little Honda. Uh, ah, they've got a face full of regalia. That's not definitely not what I want either going on down there. No overtakes for me. It's, I'm stuck. We're stuck in traffic. It's like the M25. Oh! I may have given the Civic a little bit of a bop. Uh... 
I apologise to that. There's so much going on. I, I don't know. I don't know how much the bump from me had any effect on it. How much was just Civic lost the back end with front wheel drive twitchiness uh, going on that does sometimes occur on Forza. I do apologise to him, Pega, if it was the bump from me that did that. Um, we've just, every time we've made us one step forward, something's come past us as well. Oh, it's seen such a sad time for the poor, very quick Bentley that just cannot catch a break here. Uh, can we have a look underneath the Vandura here? Yes, we can. No, the Volkswagen's going to lose out to the Evo, has lost out to the Evo 6. The Regalia has been a good rolling roadblock. All the Regalia is quick, it's, it's slightly slow, but it's quick enough to be a pain, uh, basically. It's only a little bit slow, and that makes it very, very difficult for me to do all that much here. Uh, I've got to try and use... My vehicle's strong in terms of acceleration zone. That's what I've got to try and use to my advantage here. Uh, if I can find one... Oh, we've got the overlap on the van. The van's going to have to yield, surely. Oh, the final corner. We're going to be a little bit sneaky here. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't quite the gap I was going for, but it's a gap I found myself in. Uh, where the hell did the Volkswagen go? The, Volks oh, the Volkswagen may have hit the building on the outside. The Regalia's got some top end about it. We are going to fire the Bentley up into a podium spot here. I think, I think we lost the Volkswagen to the outside wall uh, in all of that. Oh, and there was a bump between the regalia and the van. That has caused them a little bit of grief. The Bentley is so quick when it's in clean air. It's, yeah. It's been one of them races. It has been one of them races. Although, I did say Liam's got the Supra uh, all the way up the order now as the fights have gone on. Uh, we're going to round these next couple of corners. We actually brush the wall a smidge through there. And there is one more turn to go in this race. Uh, it is going to be the 2002 Turbo that takes victory from the Evo 6. I will sit on the podium with the Bentley after a hard fought for and often a little bit uh, frustrating of races. Uh, but yeah, look at the speed of that Bentley. That was one lap of clean air. One lap of clean air and the Bentley ran into a 59-0. Uh, <laughs> although I say that, the Civic was even quicker at a 58-5. Um, yeah, traffic. Traffic played its part a little bit, as it can do with racing. So, for our next race, we move up to A-Class. I'm still in the built category, so to speak. I have a Skyline. A quite powerful skyline. In fact, we're up against all sorts of vehicles. There's a Charger, a GT40 uh, in there for the bought category, along with an Exceed 360 Challenge TV, our Sagaris. Uh, there is a Clio for the built ones. Uh, it's likely to be very, very quick indeed. There's an MR2, which has just come to the game, actually, if I remember correctly. Be interesting to see how that one fares. Now, I know this skyline is pretty pretty solid as far as uh, vehicle goes, running some 540 odd horsepower all wheel drive monster, this one, which means you are going to launch pretty well uh, my hope is I think it's on rally tyres, I don't, it might not be on rally tyres, you know Ooh, we're going to bobble off the clip, off the curb, sorry, now this is all do it being done on tarmac races for a good reason, uh, as far because, well, the bought cars would struggle to get rally tyres in the PIs and I'd really restrict what they could use. So, hence why we are using all tarmac races for this. Um, we have been actually shuffled out a little bit by the Lotus. The Exige is not terrible. It's not terrible. We've seen the Exige's run pretty quickly in the past. In fact, I'm the only one of the, well, say the highly modified cars uh, running up here. The GT40's made a mess of this last section. Actually going to cost the Exige some. I'm a little bit worried about the Dodge. I know the straight line speed of that thing. A Hellcat is going to have 700 plus horsepower from stand. It's very heavy, yes. It is a big old boat of a car. Oh, didn't realize GT40 was going to be coming there as well. Where are my fellow, where are my fellow built cars? We appear to be having issues. Oh, no, no, no. Don't put me towards the fence. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to fight back. Uh, right. I'm amazed by the uh, Hellcat. I, have to, I did not expect that to be doing particularly well here, but I stand corrected. Uh, the, well, the thing the Port Lotus is not really a Lotus track, if you like. It is quite straight line speed dependent. So, there we go. Oh, I spot a Clio. I spot the maddest of Clios. Uh, so to speak, I mean, it is literally the V6 Clio is the maddest of Clios. There is no denying that one. Uh, thought about having a dive on the Exceed, but not going to work. I don't have the brakes. Um, 
I mean, this, this skyline is quite heavy in comparison. Oh, bloody hell. There's a whole host of vehicles behind. A Scirocco's turned up. A Scirocco and a Clio have turned up to join in the fun of this one. Here we go. The Clio might actually outrun me towards turn one. I'm amazed by the speed. But Renault, Renault's are just fast in this game. Renault's are just very, very good in this game. Uh, I see the shadow. Uh, we're going to try and use that to judge where that is. The MR2 is coming to join in the fun here. Uh, I'm, I thought this going to be a little bit better around here, if I'm honest with you. Um, we are struggling just a little bit, although so is the... the oh, that's a huge dive from a Scirocco. Uh, <laughs> Christ, I don't think I have... Uh, I don't think I have great tyres on this. I think that may have been the compromise I made on this car, uh, because we just got dive-bombed by a Scirocco massively, although we should outrun the Scirocco up this hill. Indeed we do. Past the Pumabile, uh, we're going to take our podium spot back. Uh, however, the bought cars are doing pretty well. We may be able to actually sneak a move on the Exceed. The Exceed is going to fight back here. Uh, how fast is the Lotus down the straight? That is an important question here. Uh, um, as I said, I'm really, really impressed by that dodge. The speed that thing has got going on here is uh, very <laughs> it's doing well. We actually pulled a gap as a bunch of cars behind started fighting. Uh, we are going to try and hold this out side by side with the Lotus, if at all possible. I just think I'm going to have to end up yielding somewhere because we are going to run out of grip on the outside of the super lightweight, well, I say super lightweight, but much lighter weight car. Oh, well. <laughs> the one corner we knew we were going to struggle on and it's not gone well for me. <laughs> I says, oh, it's a super, super close field uh, in this one. I just try to get back into uh, into line after everything went a little bit awry, and uh, yeah, it's all it all it takes. I love how we've also still got the skill chain thing uh, going on here. Um, we're gonna try and fend off that Scirocco once more. Uh, we're gonna do our very best here anyway to uh, fight against that Volkswagen. Yeah, so the Volkswagen has got super grip. I don't know what it's on. Maybe race tyres. It has got super super grip uh, going on through these corners. Oh, the TVR looks dangerous. As I mean, that is the TVR way. The TVR is very fast and then it tries to kill you. And that was the trying to kill you portion of the day, really. Uh, oh, Scirocco's going to the outside again around there. No, oh, get out of the way, TVR. Christ, it's got busy again. We've got too many cars in a little space. I, I feel like we've been a little bit boxed out in this in a few places. As is the way sometimes with the racing. But actually, the whole field is relatively close. What is the massive pink thing? I didn't notice what the giant SUV was that was running in this. Something silly, I suspect. Um, oh, that's not the gear I wanted through there. Uh, we may get Scotty on the run to the finish line. Oh, I think Longbow may have got either nudged out or missed a checkpoint. I'm not quite sure. Can we beat the TVR in a straight line? No, we can't. It's going to be a fifth place for us. Oh, could have been. Maybe could have been more in that one. Um, yeah, I mean, we were in a lot of a lot of fight. I tell you what, the Clio and the MR2 were quick. I mean, they caught up to the back of me. The Nissan was very fast in the right places. I'm impressed with the Dodge. Uh, the Scirocco was unbelievably grippy in the corners, but... Got a little bit, got a little bit murdered by those straights and just couldn't find a way past. Ah, uh, could have been a little bit more from the Nissan. However, a solid, highly exciting race, nevertheless. So, it is time for me to swap sides, I guess you could say. I'm going to be running the Bort cars. And we start with a Mustang. This is the Selene uh, SVT Cobra. Uh, I think it's SVT, uh, whatever the hell it is. It's... <sighs> in theory a pretty damn good car in theory it is a pretty damn good car um we are running up against all sorts of things and pega's got an f pace one to watch out for doesn't have much pi to play with but for some reason that thing is ridiculously quick i don't quite know how it works uh that corolla i'm a little bit scared of gto is going to go uh shooting off into the distance as well of course a lot of the uh bought cars are going to ooh, probably be rear wheel drive uh, let's face it, uh, certainly for, well, I say certainly for B-Class, I guess the previous round we had a lot of vehicles, uh, we had a lot of uh, Subarus and Evos and that lot, uh, and we've gone for some different stuff. Uh, we've got my Mustang as an M3. My Mustang is very understeery and it's already bounced off a couple of walls. Um, uh, 
I, you see, I, I say I was quietly, co I had some confidence going into this with the Mustang. That confidence is very quick. Cass, if you come to say hello, Cass is here to cheer on the Mustang, it would seem. He just walked in, headbutted my leg and meowed at me. Uh, is that cat speak for go forward or something along those lines? Uh, I can't do everything, buddy. I can't give you pets and drive all at once. No, I can't. Uh, I would be. You would. I would be. You're going to headbutt my hand on the controller, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> Distracto cat. I call cat interference. That makes this race null and void. I believe that's how it works. Uh, there's an Audi... Uh, Chris has got the Audi up in second place at the moment. It's clinging on quite well. Uh, we have settled. I was worried we were just going to start tumbling back. BMW's actually slipped to the back of the field. That surprises me. I was expecting that to be pretty good. Now, the Jag, that's a brave choice. I I have seen those Jags work, but very rarely. Uh, I cannot get one to work to save my life. However, I have seen them work. Oh, the Ford is going to get me, and it's going to get the Jag as well. Uh, I think. Possibly, as we slide our way up the hill. The Ford the Focus has not got the straight line speed of the uh, of the Mustang, and it has overshot that final corner. Oh, we'd always squeezed our teammate into the wall there. Uh, unfortunately, if we fight each other, the Ford's lost a whole load of momentum running wide and smacking that wall. The Jag's got some top end about it, I'll give it that much. Uh, up the front, I think it's a Transit, actually, that uh, leads the way here uh, from the Audi and the Corolla. It's actually quite a close field. If I could get involved, if I could start fighting with the F-Pace, I'd start fighting with that Jag. We're not all that far away from the rest of them here. Uh, and maybe the gearing of the Mustang doesn't help. Uh, it's not the worst gearbox I've ever driven. I mean, it's just it's 380 something horsepower and three and a half thousand pounds. It's just a bit too heavy and a little bit too underpowered. It's not got bad grip in the corners. I mean, of course, tyres are going to be nothing compared to what some of these cars. Some of them, the Jagger head might be on similar compound tyres. I mean, I've got standard tyres, maximum tyre widths, but uh, standard tyres on the car because I just don't. You don't have the PI to play with in this vehicle. Uh, we have got a good run through that final quarter. The F-Pace is looking to overtake an MX-5, and that's a weird sentence, I have to say. You don't normally have the big Jag SUV overtake. The MX-5 has got absolutely no straight-line speed whatsoever. Um, <laughs> it is a little unfortunate here. Even the Mustang can sweep past it and get that position, although it is now fighting back a little bit on the inside. In fact, judging by the livery, I think that's the car that did the hill climb stage. I think it may have missed a checkpoint. I don't know if I pushed it. I thought it was... I thought on, my, on my end, it looked like it got the checkpoint. If I did push that one out, I do apologise. Uh, I didn't I didn't think I did. Uh, <laughs> there is also the potential for Forza does have a little bit of a desync, uh, whereby sometimes it doesn't show players' cars correctly on each other's screens. Uh, so it's possible. Oh, the Corolla's got up to the front of the field. Uh, we're going to have a big dive on the Jag. My hope is... Oh, we're going to slide past. I didn't want to hit the wall. The Ford's actually pinned the Jag down a little bit on the exit. Uh, we're going to chase the Jag across the road. It might not be enough. Oh, we've got one more lap. I thought that was a final lap. Ignore me. Why did I think that was a final lap? I miscounted the number of laps uh, that we were doing here. Uh, oh, and I clobbered the curb so hard on the inside. The van's back leading the way. I mean, it's a huge, gargantuan battle up there for the lead. There's about four cars in it that could win this race. We jump the checkpoint through the checkpoint nicely. The focus is right behind us again. Uh, can I do this manoeuvre once more? Can I make this manoeuvre stick on the on the Jaguar? Uh, we've, got to, we've got to get underneath it here. We've got to make this pass stick. We've got to park it on the apex, which we do very nicely. The focus is going to get both of us again. I've got street furniture a little bit. I was busy trying to avoid the street furniture. I think the focus has now got it. I think the focus has done it in that. It's a good move by... Uh, by you and there to capitalise on me and the Jag having a big old squabble. I mean, I was at the limit of my brakes as well through there. Oh, it's going to be seventh for us. It looks like the Corolla wins it from the Transit. I think it's going to be a built one, two, three, four in that, although it was very close between all of them. The RS4 was up there as well. In... Oh, and then the, R... oh, the RS4 missed a checkpoint at the death. Look at the lap times. Bloody hell. That might be one of the closest lap time spreads I think I've ever seen in an event. The MX-5 gets fastest lap, but that's probably on its own at the end. Although, admittedly, there was a big old fight, so it might not read too much into that thinking about it. That was madness, and I kind of watched the madness from a distance a little bit. The Mustang was okay, but nothing special. For our final round with these vehicles, we have come to the Lakehurst Hop Circuit, and I am driving a Jaguar. I have the XKRS, a vehicle I have never 
built before. I think it's supposed to be relatively okay. It might be in higher classes, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I've never used it before. Start off towards a double A class, so I'm going to give it a go. In fact, we have a decent selection of vehicles. So the the the, the, the what's it called the bought cars uh, off towards the front. Uh, I have had an absolutely shocking start. That's <laughs> I was I was looking at this. Look at the Civic. I'm curious if it's front wheel drive. It is still front wheel drive. It's probably the only. It's definitely going to be the only front wheel drive. Uh, oh, maybe the 205 actually might be. Regardless, um, we had a terrible, terrible start. I just spun the wheels and wasted all of my time uh, getting going. That is not quite so clever. Uh, of course, there will be a fair few all-wheel drive cars in this one. They've gone shooting through. But I've had about as worse a start as you could expect. I had a quite a nice spot on the grid. Things have gone very, very badly wrong for me. Uh, I'm hoping I've got some straight line speed. My God, I hope I've got some straight line speed. I'm worried if I don't about what on earth we're going to have in terms of the handling. The 205 is out wide. There's not really going to be a space for that one, is there? I think that's the rally rather than the T16. So the T16, we start taking up to A-Class, is a very twitchy, dangerous machine. The rally gets some really big rear tyres, which can kind of help quell that. And I made a bad decision on that, <laughs> on that one. There was two ways to go. I could either try and go with the Merc or go with the Mustang. And I went on the outside and got stuck behind the... The Puma Beal, and that was probably not the correct decision in all of that. We're not last. I mean, that is progress. We are not last. We've actually got a really good run out of here, and something's happened to the Mustang. I don't know whether I missed a checkpoint, maybe? Or had a controller malfunction. Something went on with the Mustang. We were right alongside it, and it just pinged off uh, to the side. That is not so good. There's a huge battle going on up at the front there uh, between, well, just about everything. I think uh, is it the RS6, I believe, is sat in third. That's about the only uh, one. And there's a lot of the bought cars are fighting further back in this one. We've got the Mercedes up ahead, the E63, I believe, the new, uh, new, new E63, possibly. No, maybe the old one. I don't know. It's a Merc. It's big. It's all-wheel drive and has a lot of power, I suspect. Uh, BMW i8 is ahead of us, uh, which... I mean, we can't quite match the problem. We're struggling with traction out of that hairpin. We're struggling to get them. We start catching uh, down this straight. I've got a good top end in this Jaguar. That much is for sure. But uh, we start catching almost a little bit too late. Like, I can't really have a dive through here. Like, the BMW has a big crack at the inside of the Mercedes. Now, I kind of want to buy into this one. I want to kind of try and join this if I can, and I can't really afford to get stuck behind that Mercedes for too long. If I do, we're going to end up losing... Uh, out to the vehicle. Well, okay, we're, I think we're going to struggle to catch up to the lead group anyway, no matter how quick we are, unless we're an awful lot quicker a lap, which I don't think we are, sadly. Uh, the Mercedes might actually be one of the few cars I can't beat down the street. We'll give it a little bit of a bump. Sure, we'll do some bump drafting. Uh, that's not really going to help me advance my position. Can we have a look at turn one? The Mercedes kind of sits in the middle of the road. Difficult to really attack, although the Mercedes is going to struggle to make that corner. It goes in too deep through there, and that will spit me out into an eighth place. Now, What's helping us a little bit, helping both me and Clark's BMW there, is that uh, there's a big old fight going on. Now, there's a huge scrap for position, which means they're all slowing each other down. Uh, I think it's a couple of Fords leading the way. Uh, I think it's an RX-18 third at the moment. There's a BMW in there. Uh, it's a big old it's a big old group of cars. Uh, the RS-6 is flying the flag for the bought vehicles. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not so good. We've wandered out wide. We've bobbled our way through. Oh, actually, that could have been worse going through there. I've seen the rock slow cars down a lot more. Ah, oh, silly, silly, silly error by me. Did not really, did not really want to be doing that one whatsoever. I, mean, I might be in a little bit of bother in this one. I think we might end up us finding ourselves in... We're in that no-man's land. We're in the worst sort of, almost the worst sort of no-man's land. We're not quite close enough to anything. We can watch the battles, but not close enough to really do anything. Uh, but we are miles quicker than the two cars. The two Mercedes have had a horrid time. Those two Mercs have really not had a very good time at all. I can't even see them behind me. Uh, they've lost a good chunk of time. Uh, for about. Ah, annoyed myself. It was a silly mistake from the... We didn't have crazy pace around here. We haven't had crazy large amounts of speed whatsoever. Just like the, Mercedes, the battle of the Mercedes are pretty good. I mean, I'm kind of uh, driving around on my own a little bit looking at the times now. It's like we gain a little bit here and there. Again, the, the fighting will help as that is a huge squabble. I mean, they're within... There's less than a second covering about six cars, as far as I can tell. And then there's me and Clark, who are just sat back watching it. They look like there's two and three wides going on all up ahead. Ah, oh, it's really annoying. The Jag is just... The Jag is good? Like, this is not a terrible car to drive by any stretch of the imagination. It really isn't a bad car. Uh, the problem is it's just not quite quick enough. The gap's remaining about the same to the group. We kind of lose it as soon as we get to the corners. We gain it when we get to the straights. We must be one of the quicker cars on the straight. Maybe not quite. We're not as quick as the E63, but it handles so badly it doesn't matter. Uh, we must be one of the quicker cars. Uh, the RS6 I'm actually surprised to see working as well. Don't get me wrong. I love the RS6, naturally. Uh, but they're big and heavy. 
And, I mean, well, this jag is a little bit big and heavy. It's not quite as big and heavy, uh, really. The, the gaps are just not changing for us whatsoever here. It really is just to drive around uh, on our own a little bit. Clark is almost caught up to the big old squabble, uh, I mean, as you would expect, really, with that. So with, with, with all of that fighting, uh, Clark is just that little bit further down the road, a little bit closer. I hadn't run wide, but <laughs> just... Uh, there's nothing I can do. We're just sat here driving around, doing our own thing. As I said, it's not a bad car to drive, this Jag. It really isn't a bad car to drive whatsoever. But uh, we are just a smidge too slow. We are just a smidge too slow around this circuit. It's down to 5.2 by the end of the straight. It'll then go back up to about 5.6, 5.7, and then it'll fall back down to about 5 as we come across the start-finish line. Um, yeah, we... Um, I'd hoped we'd have the pace to at least stick with the i8, but uh, we've fallen back. Actually, now we're the, the, so it goes up to about 5.6, and now kind of falling back down again. It's a manic race up at the front. Well done to all involved in that one. I'm gutted that they couldn't be a part of it in many ways. It looks like it's going to be Ford from Ford from... Uh, I'm not actually sure what Longbow was driving in all of that one. Uh, it's definitely all of... Uh, it was a Civic, of course. Uh, it's definitely... Oh, no, it's Ford from Mazda from Honda from... Ford. The built cars definitely thrashed us in that one. I mean, my lap time... My laptop wasn't too far off the pace. It was kind of okay-ish. Um, but, I mean, that, that was a group of cars fighting, and I was a little bit struggling. Oh, neither of my bought vehicles were as good as I might have liked. So, on to some form of conclusions from all of this. It ran roughly along the lines of what I was expecting to see. The majority... or I say the majority of the time... It was easier to make the built cars work in this one because of the freedoms that you had in the way that you built them, what you could do with them, what you could have in terms of parts. It is easier to make those vehicles work. That being said, it is not impossible to make the higher PI vehicles work. Now, I didn't. I thought the Mustang and the Jaguar were actually fairly solid choices and they were both, I mean, mid-pack really at best. They sort of clung on a little bit, but uh, they were not quite good enough. But there were some cars that could work the Exceed. The hell, the Charger, the Hellcat, that, no one expected that to do well. Okay, held by a massive, massive squabble and so on, but they could still be competitive. Some unusual cars worked that I didn't expect uh, whatsoever. Some cars you might expect didn't necessarily work as well. Um, it's definitely, you know, ways you can, you can make them work. Of course, it'll depend on what you're building them for and all of that, naturally speaking. But, uh, yeah, the, the built cars are much easier to get right. However, if you do get the bought vehicles correct, if you do get the limited amount of parts, so you get them at the right track and so on, they can still put up a very, very good fight indeed. That, though, is going to be it from, from me for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.